The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, my name's Rod and I'll be hosting the Contours Travel webinar this morning on Lima, Paracas, Nazca and Huacachina in Peru. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is covering a little bit of on that areas this morning, going through, showing you some maps, talking about itineraries, how to get there and some of the fascinating things that you can see in that region. Okay, initially um, looking at a, a map here of Peru, um, the main entry point coming in, people are likely to fly into Lima, be it from North America, from Brazil, from Argentina, or when coming from Australia via Santiago. There's no direct flights from Australia to Lima, I wish, but um, not the case. So people coming into Lima, um, and then the area that I'm going to be focusing on today is the area to the south of Lima, covering Paracas, Ica, Nazca, this area in here, okay, the coastal area. When you look at the map of Peru, pretty much you've got deserts stretching the entire uh, coastal section right down here and all the way down into Chile. Very diverse Peru, so you've got the, the desert, you've got the mountains, and you've got the Amazon. So three completely different areas of the country, um, and this area is um, essentially desert. Okay, It is very interesting for the, the, for the attractions in there. The Paracas National Park, which includes the Ballestas Islands, Ica in the desert with its wineries and with the Huacachino Oasis, and one of the great mysteries of South America, or the world around Nazca with the Nazca lines, okay, which I'll cover um, off on shortly. Okay, so um, starting with Lima, um, travelling there, Sydney to Santiago to Lima, um, there's daily flights, four times weekly with Qantas between Sydney and Santiago, and daily between Sydney, Auckland, Lima with LAN, with connections through, regular connections through for a three hour flight from Santiago to Lima. Okay, once you get to Lima, I'll be covering off on the section Lima to Paracas by road and Paracas on to Nazca and explaining how that can fit into the itineraries for your clients. Okay, to come into to Lima, Lima is a city um, that was established around 500 years ago and it served as the Spanish um, capital of the Americas as such. So everything within uh, South America had to come through Lima and it was the established capital. Okay, so looking back one side at the, at the ancient to the modern of the, the coastal region. So the city is known as the City of Kings because that's where they ruled South America from. Um, and looking at the coastal region here on the Pacific coastline, <clears throat> the, the paragliders or the uh, people taking over, and this is the area of Miraflores where the majority of the hotels are located. The city itself of Lima has a population of 10 million people, so it is a very large city, but um, one that can be easily explored by tourists, um, barring a little bit of traffic congestion. Um, previously, Lima did have a little bit of a bad reputation with crime and um, being dirty and so forth, but certainly over the last 10 to 15 years, um, which I've certainly first-hand witnessed, um, is certainly the um, clean-up of the city, making it a very tourist-friendly destination that's certainly worth a two- to three-night stay for clients visiting to Peru. It can be served as a good place to start uh, an itinerary, and once after a long travel um, trip to get there, often from Australia, um, it can be good just to have a, a break before heading on to the attractions further up into the Andes, depending on time frames and places where clients are going to visit. Okay, the city of Lima um, is divided up. I, as I mentioned, we've got the, the Pacific area um, and the suburb of Miraflores. This is where the majority of the hotels are located where um, clients are going to be staying. You've got the Larco Mar Shopping Centre right on the coast, looking out with beautiful views. Around this area, this is um, Parque Kennedy, which is um, a, a park in the middle, grassy areas, but evenings has a, a nightly market. And all of the hotels, um, which I'll show a few shortly, are located generally around that area. Lots of fine um, places to, to eat and try the very famous Peruvian cuisine. Okay, other areas where people tend to stay, 
around Barranco on the coast, Barranco meaning cliff, um, and then around that area. So that's generally where people come in. The Some people enter by port, you can see over in Callao, where the cruise ships come in, and also not far from the airport. So roughly to get from the airport to Miraflores, you're looking at 45 minutes, depending on the amount of traffic. Um, and then the other area of Lima is the downtown area. So this is set back about eight kilometres from the coast to the downtown area. This is the old downtown where you've got the presidential palace, the Lord Mayor, the cathedral, and many of the monasteries such as the one I showed in the earlier photo. In the Miraflores area, you've got um, hotels ranging between three and five, three, four and five star, some small boutique hotels in Barranco. Some of our favourites include the Casa Andina private collection, the Belmont Miraflores Park, and um, there's probably 30 to 40 different hotels that we use in the Lima area. Um, and there's, there's no shortage of hotels there, apart from when the IMF has a conference or something. Okay, um, as I mentioned, some beautiful boutique type hotels in the Hotel B and the very newly opened Temporal Boutique Hotel, um, only opening in the last few months in the area of Barranco. So certainly um, selections to suit people's personal preferences and also to suit their budgets. Okay, um, this is one of the monasteries in the downtown of Lima and some other pictures of downtown Lima here and the main plaza, Plaza de Armas, um, in downtown Lima. When you're in Lima, certainly there's a lot to do. Most people tend to spend two, three nights there taking in a tour um, of the city. Some people like to do it in a different form where it can be done as a bicycle tour, um, exploring the different areas of the city. Or recently, um, within the last sort of 10 years, Peru has become a culinary destination and has three of the top 20 restaurants in the world, figure off the top of my head, um, and the cuisine with its blends, um, they, they look to be preparing a ceviche there, which is one of the national dishes of Peru, uh, which is a, a, a raw fish or where it's cooked in lime juices, served with ricotta, chili, um, sweet potato, onion, beautiful, certainly um, one of the, one of the favourites of Lima. Okay, so around the area there's various different things um, from the ancient ruins, the pre-Inca ruins dating back around um, 1800 years to Waka, Waka Pukiana, um, which is basically right in the Miraflores region, very close and easy to visit. There is a restaurant located there that you can visit at the night time. Pachacamac, which is about 20 kilometres south of the city, or um, Larco, the Larco Herrera Museum, which is visited on the majority of the city tours that we put together, um, but basically because it gives a good introduction to not only the Incas, but the variety of different dozens of cultures that existed um, prior to the Incas. And obviously, um, being the, the city of kings, there's a lot of colonial type buildings um, and religious monuments from the colonial period. Okay. Leaving from Lima, uh, many of, many people wish to, to visit to Nazca, um, to visit to the Nazca lines. So one way in which this can be done is to go from Lima, travelling down to Caracas. That journey time is around about three and a half hours. Caracas located by the little city of Pisco, and that's a, a peninsula there. Okay, And from there, you can visit to the Ballestas Islands, plus you can also do the overflights of the Nazca lines from the Pisco airport, okay? So flying over Nazca and then coming back to there and then you can return. That's like a two day um, time frame. So coming out there, traveling, doing the overflight in the afternoon, overnighting in practice and then the next morning going out to visit the Bayestas Islands off the coast, okay? So this is the National Reserve. As I mentioned, it's desert. So you've got the National Reserve just outside Paracas and um, some of the beautiful hotels that are located there, the Paracas Resort, the Aranwa Spa and Resort, looking out onto the bay, um, some of the, the fishing boats that are there, and also the pier for the boat trips to go out to the Bayestas Islands. On the Bayestas Islands, you've got a variety of um, sea seals, sea lions, um, and a variety of um, seabirds, okay, um, out around there. It makes for a beautiful little two, two and a half to three hour trip. 
From also, as I mentioned, from the Pisco Airport, you can do a aircraft or a flight over the Nazca lines. This is a small one normally used from Nazca only. They tend to, to use um, a Cessna caravan, about a 30 seater for the flights from Pisco, where you can see below on the desert floor one of the um, Nazca lines. Now the Nazca lines were put there between around 200 AD to 800 AD by the Nazca culture. And um, this is just one of the series of drawings. There's the bird, there's um, the monkey, the condor, the, the dog, the spaceman, a variety of drawings, and they can pretty much only be seen from the air. Um, you're not allowed to walk onto the, the desert where um, these have been etched in there, and they've been preserved for that um, duration because of the um, lack of rainfall in the area, essentially. About one hour south of Paracas is the little town of Wakachina. Okay, Wakachina is in basically in the middle of the desert. There's a little oasis there, um, and from there, from the township of or nearby to Ica, you can undertake buggy trips um, through the dunes. Um, you can do sandboarding for the more adventurous, or just enjoy the area. This is another one of the um, drawings, the Nazca lines drawings which I mentioned earlier, um, taken from the plane. Um, this one is supposed to be the Colibri, or the, the Hummingbird, okay? This is just one, one of the mini designs. Okay, so you can travel from Paracas. If people are doing an itinerary where they're looking to, to travel from Lima to Paracas, onwards to Nazca and to Arequipa by the coastal stretch, um, you you might visit to Nazca and then do the short flight from there where it's only a 30 minute flight as opposed to an hour and a half if doing it from Pisco. So there are lovely places to stay in Nazca um, to, to spend the night. In the area, as I mentioned, Wakachina between Paracas and Nazca, uh, one hour from Paracas to Ica or Wakachina and a further two and a half hours from Wakachina onto Nazca. So that's sort of between there. So you can do in Paracas, the bicycle tours, visit to Wakachina, and then from Nazca, you've got the um, one of the um, Nazca culture archaeological sites um, near to the Pampas where the Nazca lines are. And one of the, the more interesting things, it doesn't look like it looking at the picture, is the Chowchilla Cemetery, which is um, just outside of Nazca. In that area, um, the Nazca cultures used to perform, um, I guess, like, much like the Egyptians, um, preserve the, the body so they would remove the organs and then try and mummify their, um, their, their, their dead, <laughs> essentially. So what they would do, and because of the very dry conditions, um, they've been found in the desert and some of these mummies are up, uh, um, up to 1,500 years old. Um, we don't have time to go into all the, the head elongation or anything like that, but certainly that's one of the, the things that can be visited from there, as well as the pre-Inca aqueducts, okay? So this is a, another picture looking out, um, the buggy trips going out into the Wakachina Desert, okay? Hopefully that's been informative. Essentially, um, a, a couple of different options. As I mentioned, two days, one night from Lima to go to Paracas, to do the overflights of the Nazca Lines, the Bayestas Islands, that's the most common. Or if people are, are looking to explore more by land, is to go to Paracas, do the Bayestas Islands, via Wakachina on their way to Nazca, overnight in Nazca, do the flights, and then bus onwards to Arequipa. Okay, so this will be one of several uh, webinars about Peru, a very popular destination um, for people. Okay, um, if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to ask um, and I'll do my best to, to answer that. Okay, and for those people who have been um, following our webinars, um, we have a, a question on here each week. If you'd like to send the answer to the question um, to Lou um, on the email below, what is the name of the islands that can be visited from Paracas? I've, um, said that one a couple of times, the Boeustus Islands. Um, so just send that answer through to Lou. Um, and then if there's any other questions, um, please feel free to contact us, contours at contourstravel.com or have a look at our website, contourstravel.com. Thank you very much for um, 
for your time this morning.